and this is Ray Ray coming to you live from the Road Famous Comedy Store for a brand new episode of Pill Tony. Get up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Yay. Yay. How are you guys doing tonight? I just spilled my coffee first thing. It's a sign of the fun to come, everyone. Right on the, right on the old sponge. <laughs> That's going to be wet all night. How about that? <laughs> little uh, behind the scenes show business magic. We're dealing with a wet coffee coffee table. We just turned this into a coffee table. How's that for some humor right from the get? <laughs> anyway, uh... It's good to be here. I've been told that this is episode 25, everybody. So, how exciting. 25 Mondays in a row. What many are calling the fastest growing comedy podcast of all time. So, no big deal. Unless uh, you care about that type of stuff. Um, so, it's very exciting. Things are good. Brian, you just got back from Vegas. Yeah, I got to see the fights. Got to. I went to a uh, nightclub and uh, there was only one table booth left and the guys I was with had money and they were like, hey, we want to chip in for a table? I'm like looking at my wallet like, oh, I got to go to the ATM. And I'm thinking like getting out like, you know, like $100 maybe or something, 20, you know, some 20s. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's a $2,500 table. Oh. Did you know that even existed? No. I don't hang around people that would even suggest that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then like, it was really weird. It was like, because we were right over where the DJs were, like in this huge booth, and, and you just got to see how much they don't do. Right. And then the guy was like, you got some guy came to him, and he's like, oh, and he hits pause, and then, and then this other guy walks out, and he presses play, and it was like, guys, give it up for Tiesto, or whatever his name is, like some famous yeah. DJ, I guess, Tiesto, or... And he just seriously, seriously, there was like four tables of like just like with one big red button that he would push and make the CD sound weird for a second, and then those DJs have it made, man. Yeah, they're not doing anything. Nothing. And they just hold that thing up, and they're like always the one dancing the hardest to their own shit that they've already heard a thousand times over and over again. Like yeah. they made it that way previously, and then they're just hitting play on something, and then they're dancing and touching things, but. It's gotten to a point now to where, like, back in the old days, they used to have to have a record, and you could see them blatantly having to scratch that record. They didn't have the technology to just lay down the track right. and then put that on a record and have one record playing while just making it look like you're scratching another record. But now technology has caught up to the DJ. Meanwhile, they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars at these fucking gigs. Yeah. It, and you could do it. Yeah, I think I think that just there was probably about 5,000 people there, and each ticket was about $100, and then there was booths everywhere. There was even booths that cost more than the booth we were in. They were like, see those booths down there? That's a $5,000 booth. That's a $10,000 booth. And the $10,000 booth was seriously right in the middle of everyone dancing. Guys, come sit in this empty front row, please. Yeah, come on it in. It's very, very... Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, me and you had a little conversation at the beginning about the seven-minute song. You, you, uh, uh, you really want me to change the uh, seven-minute song. Every Monday. The only thing that has stayed the same since all 25 episodes since we started this thing, except for one night. We've always had the same seven-minute count. Like, there's a seven-minute warning, and, and then... It's Balls in Your Butthole, which is this song right here that you guys have probably heard. It's just a, it's a delightful song about putting your balls in somebody's It eats bubble. away at my soul every Monday. <laughs> listening to this before the show starts. But, and I, but don't you think it's a good, like, oh, balls in the buttholes off, gotta go upstairs. I think we could retrain the brain you for think? another song. What, what do you guys think? Do you guys like balls in your butthole? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Right, fuck all you guys, yes. all right. There you go. They like balls in your butthole. Wait, it's a good vegan song. you think you'd like it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Is the ball falling out? What's going on over there? Oh, my God. How's that a vegan song? And why do you laugh at that, that hard Asian guy? What's so funny about that to you? I like vegan jokes. You like vegan jokes? He likes vegan Did you once, like, date a vegan or something and she broke your heart? That's normally how that happens, right? Why do you hate vegans? No, I don't. I don't. All right. I don't, I don't know why I'm talking to you on a podcast right now. Nobody can hear what you're saying. On top of you being unmiked, you're also Asian, which is very naturally quiet. The Iron Patriot is here, everybody. Speaking of Asian guys. I will beat these new Avengers into battle against anyone who threaten our way of life. I am the Iron Patriot. 
as always, live in the flesh. Yes, Donnie. I learned something new about the Iron Patriot. I can't wait to hear it. I was standing behind him like this, awkwardly looking at his butt, going like, wow, I wonder where I could like, put my finger in there to tickle him. But I couldn't find anything. And then I went around the front, and I found this like little hole that you could tickle him in, and he's so fucking ticklish. Look at this. <laughs> He tried not to laugh outside, he was laughing his ass off. He really did not expect you to try to tickle him on the air like that. That's awesome. He got I've never heard him get like that real. Yeah. Oh, come on, Red Band, please. That's great. Uh that smaller finger. Red Band, this is this is you what a Patriot pick. It gotta be less red band. We you have to I need like I need like eighty percent red band right now. Right, Defending balls in your butthole and then making me smell your Patriot finger. <laughs> You're at 130% red band right now. Yeah. Vegas made you... Vegas blew you up. It's the not drinking thing. I'm trying not to drink anymore. That's what it is. Yeah. I have all this energy. I have solid stools now. Did you guys know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that you're not supposed to shit water for two months straight? And if you do, you probably shouldn't be drinking. That's what happens to you. Yeah, Another just... friend that I knew... That, I, that just uh, stopped drinking... Um, he told me that uh, he was shitting blood for like years and oh, just yeah. thought that was normal. Yeah, yeah that happens too. Patriot, you, you, how's your stool been? Um, I got my diet down so good now that there's nothing even on the paper. I wipe, I can't even see nothing on there. Wow. And my stomach's feeling good. I'm eating those veggie burgers every day. I eat the rice, I crunch the chips up in it. I eat the green beans. I eat the raisin bran in the morning. <laughs> wow. Maybe a little dessert with some peanut M&Ms too. Have you ever had to poop while in the suit? No. Wow. Your, your left arm almost twitched off its hinges on that one. Oh my god. I've never seen a robot do the robot before, but uh, it's fucking happening. Yeah, yeah. I was on Target Center Recreation on Friday. Um, it was Rob Lowe's last day on the show. Uh huh. Yeah, they served some cake. And, um,. You know, he's been on that show for like three years, but he's moving on to do other things. But they say the show is going to continue, though. Okay. Um, I was thinking about my career, Tony, this week. I've been thinking about it for a few weeks. Um, I see you guys do all these comedy shows, you know, besides this. And I tried to go down the Laugh Factory on Tuesday night. Oh, my God. Why would you do that? I don't know why. It wasn't. I was denied for the first time. I got into Hollywood Improv. I got into House of Blues. But this club would not let me in. There was a female brother. She didn't like me. <laughs> and I saw that guy back there in the corner. I saw him there. Did he come to this show? He's the older gentleman. Didn't you see me? He saw me, didn't he? Yeah. And he said, go over and talk to Harvey. I met Harvey, the open mic guy. He liked me. But I could tell he didn't have much power. And <laughs> see, you're supposed to go down there and wait three or four hours right. before five, and then you get a ticket for the next week. So wait a second, what were you trying to do? What was your goal? You wanted to go on stage and I didn't know what, night? I didn't know for sure, Tony. I was just what gonna, did you want to do? Well, I was gonna go up there for three minutes if they let me on stage, and I was gonna explain who I was, and I was gonna maybe tell some of my jokes, maybe some of the things you wrote for me, I was gonna tell them about those. Can we get a little example of what your stand-up would have been like on that day? So first of all, let's just say you walked up to the stand and you had to put it all the way down like how it is. That's the first thing people would see. All right? Whereas everybody else lifts the stand. Anyway. Uh, so yeah. give us a little example. I don't know. I mean, first I would have heard it hit him with some of my special flex, like, ka -doo, ka -doo. Go, go, go. Just to start, a stranger walks on stage, yeah, and that's yeah. what you do. You yeah, just start making money. I'm going to say, for every life you save, there's a million new ways to die. Okay. That's enough. You only get one day. Tomorrow belongs to me. And then I'm going to tell him about that I ordered my costume in November of 2011. It took a year and a half. It was ordered from Norway. What's funny about that? Well, I, I don't think I'm like Joey Diaz. I think I just tell stories. I don't think I have well, to yeah, But at a comedy club, you have to have those stories be funny. And if you're just talking about ordering a Well, product, I was going to get to the female brothers and the Parkinson Center recreation. I was going to do some of that, too. But I don't know. Maybe I should just do this show and do conversational comedy. I'm confused about my career. Um, I, I'm happy with this show. I think, I think you know. I Maybe know. I should do this show. No, I'm just this. Maybe, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this. I get to do songs here and stuff. This I, fucking I, guy has been trying to jump ships. No, like no, I, was, three. I told you I feel guilty because you guys do so many other things, and then I just do this. But, but I'm kind of more limited than you guys. I can't go as many places. 
So the lady wouldn't let me in. She just said, she said I need to come and wait in my street clothes next week. And I'm not going back. I don't like it. I told you about that place, didn't yeah. I? Yeah, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't believe you. I've never been denied before. They let me on the bus free. They let me, every club lets me in free. But this place, that female brother, she don't like me. Josh, what are you doing back there? Putting on a fucking light show? It just a little, let it be how it is. What's it's wrong fine. with the light? What's going on? I keep seeing the these glaring in the mirrors. It's like, Jesus, Josh, just relax. Our, put your hands together for our nervous, neurotic producer, Josh Martin. Always bumbling and fumbling, knocked over. And just uh, 15 minutes ago, he knocked over all of the waitress's drinks. There you go. That's the first applause break I ever got. <laughs> so you're in together with Jenny, your lovely waitress tonight, getting us all liquored up. Crowning coat. Oh, yes. You got it. And uh, so, fuck yeah. Oh, Patriot, I have some great guests tonight. You guys ready for me to bring up my guests? Huh? Everybody, it's such an exciting night. I've been waiting a long time to get these two guys on here, and uh, I'm really glad that I got them both at the same time. Uh, no particular order. You know this guy from the Death Squad, Punch Drunk, uh, Punch Drunk, Punch Drunk Sports Podcast. Uh, you know him from his great comedy on the Ice House Chronicles and at the Ice House and many other places. One of my funniest pals. I hang out with him every night. It's Jason, the Team Pebo, everybody! And also, uh, another one of my favorite friends, uh, you know him, you love him from Workaholics, his half hour special, one of the funniest people I know, Eric Griffin is here, in the fucking house! What's up, buddy? How you guys doing? I'm good, how are you? Fuck yeah, great. Good to have you, Eric. Team. Hassan, can you hear me good? Okay, we're good. I don't think you hear me good. Alright. Oh yeah, we got you. Welcome, guys. Wow. How are so you? far, it's been great, I feel like. Uh, we got spilled drinks from an idiot. We got a grown man in a robot suit. We're good, I think. Uh, now, this is your first time really getting to see the Patriot, right, guys? Yeah, I'm jealous. Really jealous. I used to have to wear underoos and, like, that was my Halloween costume. Was, <laughs> yeah. You were in underoos when yeah. you met him? Yeah, this, no, well, that's between him and I. <laughs> But that's incredible. Yeah. I don't even know what the fuck to say to that. I met him a few <laughs> times here, like after your show, like waiting to go up downstairs and different things like that. And I'm like, am, am I having an acid flashback right now? Did I do too much drugs in the 90s? But no. Jason, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, boy, this can only go bad. Go ahead. Wow. I was watching your Punch Drunk Sports show today. Oh, thank you. And I happened to catch the episode that Tony was on. Oh, yeah, he's on tomorrow, and actually. Tony be on tomorrow. He said something that really surprised me. He said that he once hooked up with a female brother. He said she was better, she was warmer, but he said he also might have thought that it was because she had a fever. Now, was that jungle fever telling me? <laughs> this is so great. Uh, you did say that you hooked up with a black yeah. woman once, that, you, and he said yes. her inner temperature was yes. warmer than normal. What? Yes, what? it felt that way. That is it was racist. unbelievable. No, either either black women have a special vagina or uh, the one I ha was with uh, had, not. Had, a, had a flu or something like that. Oh. It, it, it? it felt like it was about 99 to 100 degrees. <laughs> it was fucking unbelievable. Well, what is this supposed to be? Room temperature? <laughs> no, no, it was supposed to be what, seven, normal. 73 degrees vagina? Is I'm that what telling you, you this was, it, if I could up just the vagina temp a degree or two, I would. One degree? Yeah. I'm telling you, it's fucking crazy. But, but, not, but I felt it. Is, yeah. I felt it. I don't know whether it was, maybe she had a flu? Yeast infections do that. No, no. Everything was lovely about her. Everything was, I mean, this is also one her. of the most one of the most beautiful women Very I've ever fine. been with. One of the most beautiful women you've ever fucked once and never talked to again. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I got to hang out with her for an, for an entire summer. I was house-sitting for Benji. He has a mansion in the Hollywood Hills, or had a mansion in the Hollywood Hills. Um, that's where he was living at the time, and I was house-sitting for him for an entire month. And, and she was some sort of employee that he had? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, you can, and, and this was, I was still working the door here. I guess you're fucking the maid. Like it's I, me, the best. You're gonna get it, maid. I had no career, I had nothing, but all I had was the leverage of 
Hey, uh, I'm house sitting for my buddy as a mansion right up the Hollywood Hills. And and that's was, all it takes it was in LA. One of the best summers of my life. Did you ever play it like it was your mansion? Like, hey, come no. to my place in the hills. No, that was it was it was not believable. You'd walk in and there would just be you know, there's like a it's not Tony ish. There's like little <laughs> Jewish things everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question, what's with the sword, broken sword here? Well, this is the uh, this is the uh, sword of Kill Tony. We're in episode twenty five, so it's taken a beating for the eight dollars that I paid for it in Chinatown. It's a vegan thing. To vegan sword. See, that would be an opportunity. You kill plants with it. The bad joke doesn't even fit. So it's like a double whammy. Like you're trying hard and. Are we already starting? Doesn't even make this sense. first minute. Right? <laughs> yeah, that, was, uh, that was our pre talk warm up. Like Red Man's gonna make a couple bad jokes, and we're gonna start the show. And that's hey, Jason, how we're gonna... Yes, of course. Hey, Jason, do you think we could bring glam metal back to the strip if we got Tony in that yellow suit that Uma Thurman wore and Kill Bill and got the wig on him? I don't know if we can bring glam metal back, but I definitely am pretty sure Tony would get a couple cocks in his mouth if he uh, <laughs> walked around. Yeah, look cool. He, Tony kind of reminds me of David Bowie. And you know, David Bowie's been married to a black woman for the last 20 years. And um, now, now that I found this new thing about Tony on your podcast... Um, I'm ready to rock it glam style. Him in the yellow jumpsuit, he's got the shoes, the sword, the wig. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you were able to flush that idea out in front of everybody. Let me talk to you, Eric, before we start the show. Oh, please. I I was listening to you on a film podcast today, Uh and you were getting real passionate talking about the comics. Oh, that's true. Spider-Man and stuff. Oh, yeah. What I wanted to ask you is, are you aware of the story of Iron Patriot with Norman Osborn, a.k.a. Green Goblin? Uh, I am not aware, and I'm sure you're about to tell me. Well, well, they changed it up in Iron Man 3, and I wanted to hear your thoughts on it, but that's okay. If you you don't know about it, it's okay. Well, if you really want me to bitch about Marvel Comics, I'll say this. Mm Mm-hmm. You can't have a movie like Thor and have aliens attack and then the other Avengers don't show up. It just doesn't make yeah. any fucking sense anymore. Yeah. You can't create a world where we know the Avengers exist yeah. and then like, oh, so they're just like busy that day? And Spider-Man's just back. The whole yeah. world. Well, no, no, Spider-Man's okay because he's not in that world, but they've created the world of the Avengers, the Hulk. Spider-Man yeah. was an Avenger for a while. Yeah. I know, but he's not in the fucking movies, nerds. Yeah, yeah. yeah but as I'm saying, it takes place in New York, and if this was like a true like Avengers but, movie... But Spider-Man I'm okay with like not having those worlds connected. <laughs> they actually connected the world. I'm talking yeah. about the actual movies. They've like Peter connected. Parker's like eating pizza, watching the world come to an end. He's like, looks like Thor's got it. <laughs> Let Spider-Man go. We've right. seen a movie with the Hulk, Captain America, you know, Iron Man. Those mm-hmm. people should show up. Yeah, they need to bring in yeah. their stars. Yeah, it doesn't fucking make any sense. Do you work for Sony? Is that why you're no. not getting ignored? <laughs> you... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Patriot, would See you... See what you've done, Iron Patriot? Yeah, way to go. The yeah. panel's already fighting. <laughs> this is a very yeah. weird, like, nothing from this group right yeah, here. Yeah, it's like, really, really tight. These right guys now. are like, just go ahead and start America Doesn't Have Talent, please. Could you guys get that <laughs> part of the line? Do you mean like a hostage negotiator or something like that? <laughs> Do you really want to be here? Like, are you going to get involved? This is a very AA meeting-ish right here. It really is. What the fuck is going on right here? It's like being at the Apollo and trying to, like, talk about life before showtime at the Apollo starts. And I'm like, just give us a reason to boo, please. Could you get it started? Yeah. Well, yeah, we might as well. You guys ready to get this thing started or what? We have over 30 comedians that have signed up uh, for the opportunity to do one minute. If you don't know the deal, it's something like this. At 60 seconds, you will hear. Ooh, it's a wow. tiger this nice. week. And by the way, Spider-Man was not an Avenger because he wouldn't give up his secret identity. But anyway, go on. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> there you go. Fuck yeah. Is, is, is that, that's what happens if you try to run the sound of the more mellow cat. Uh, and if you run that sound... Uh, <laughs> That is one angry bear. You don't want to bring him out. So okay, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> At a minute, what, the sound, what sound is what now? At a minute, what? the sound of a cat. We have we have every oh, okay. Every cat sound in the so world. So what does complete silence from the audience do? What is that one? <laughs> well, <laughs> Is that on there too? Right, so are we gonna figure out what we're playing at 60 <laughs> seconds in the light? Yeah. The lion says yeah, later. I think Red Band's still on ecstasy from uh, Vegas, everyone. I'm pretty convinced. From 2012? 
coming back at about 15% power. Um, so it's, a, it's the first cat or the second cat? Okay, we'll he's just going to make the noise with his mouth. This just week. don't do 90 seconds of comedy, people. I mean, he gets right. Exactly. Don't do 65 seconds either. Let's but do actually seconds. do 60 seconds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate that. Okay. Nobody got that one? All right. All righty. Thank you for the four people <laughs> paying attention. Right. Here we go. It's Dean Parach. You know, I'm feeling so dirty when they start talking cute. I don't want to tell them that. <laughs> so, guys. So, uh, I'm a new comic, and I'm trying to find my voice. Uh, so, I was watching uh, Old Mermaid the other day. And uh, I realized, well, Ariel's hotter. Uh, Ursula's way more fuckable. She has her own place. I don't have to worry about her dad coming home and blowing up with a trident. And uh, I don't know if it's a vagina, but it's fuckable. That's all I got to worry <laughs> so you just did 14 seconds. <laughs> like that's really it? Yeah, I mean, you were doing good. Dude. You have nothing else. Do another one. Like, I've been trying to, you know, make that bit a little bit longer. <laughs> I mean, you still got 35 seconds. Um, I don't know. I could go into something about how. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You know what that sound means. <laughs> no, actually we don't. We heard 14 right. sounds before the show started, and none of them made sense to either one of us. I would love to know what sound was that. That was never a sound that we heard, actually. It was a giant thought whistle. The odds of us um, turning that Little Mermaid bit into something is, uh, the, the odds are better of there being an actual mermaid that's on the show at some point. Well, I disagree. I, I understand what you went. You know? I mean, when I got up... First of all, I thought, like, you know, you, you could have went with the Ariel's too hot and the fat girl. He's easier to fuck, you know what I mean? I thought it was, so that's where you were kind of going with that, you know. Well, so. you can't have sex with a mermaid, but you can have sex with an octopus. Well, see, that you should have talked about that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, there's no right or wrong way. Like, you could have gone to, like, talk. now you can start talking about fucking fishes or whatever you want to do, but, you know, don't stop just because you have a little premise. Make that your punchline and then work backwards. Mermaids have buttholes, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. Do they really? Oh, yeah, they do have to poop. Yeah. Where, where is it? In a, in a pee out of their foot bubble. That's the that's the hard part. Is finding that well, I mean, are they hatched? I mean, like mermaids don't just like appear; they have to like come from someplace. Right. Yeah, that's they the come problem. from the bottom. Really? Yeah, like You've an obsession with Ursula. Really? I mean, it's a weird. I mean, it's, she's kind of weirdly sexual. If you look back. Well, how so? I mean, I don't know. She's kind of doing sex stuff. Well, how, how is it? <laughs> well, how is it to you? She has those little, like, squiggly, like, slave dudes when you walk into her place. That's weird. You see what I'm saying? It's like, right now, you're more engaged about this yeah. than you were during your act. He's totally right. You know, so all I'm trying to point out to you is that just, you know, Stretching. you're just so nervous about this thing, and it's like, don't be. Just, like, just talk about, you know, what, what you think about. You know, like, especially you, for a minute. You probably stood in a mirror, or you had these bits, and you, like, talked about it in your apartment for seven minutes and then came here and gave us like 20 seconds. You could have milked that for a little bit longer. I mean, in a complimentary way. I definitely think there's something there. Definitely. Yeah, man. Just stretch it out and get, you know, like... I think your 14 seconds just turned into 28 in front of our very eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you might be pushing it. I'll give you but 20. But I would say, you, uh, <laughs> you know, like your whole demeanor, you're just like nervous or whatever it is like that. And that's like, you're, you're not even doing your bit justice because you're worried about your performance, you know? And there is a captive audience, literally. You know what I mean? So, and like I, another com no, another yeah, kind of another compliment I'll give you, man, is like you had it, got a couple laughs, you know, and you you, you never come out strong. Like any, you know, these guys are all good comics up here. Like, no matter how funny your well. first bit is, <laughs> you know, people kind of laugh at it, and then you get them on board after that. Like, you know, you had them on board, and then you go, by the way, go fuck yourself. <laughs> That's all I got. I mean, you could, dude, just pace yourself, man. And have fun with it, you know? Get shit in there. Just what other cartoon characters you want to fuck? Think about that shit when you go home. That's true. Like, there's you probably got 20 minutes on Scooby Doo and Doggy Style alone. I mean, you're good, though. I don't want the wrong way. Doria, or whatever that girl's name is. Yeah, Dora the Explorer. Yeah. That's her name. Yeah, or Daria. Explore like that Dora. chick. Daria would be better. You could fuck Dora and Daria. One's tighter than the other, though, guys. And we, we know an AP Explorer. You know why? Speak Spanish. That's always a fucking door the Explorer speaks Spanish. Okay. And that chick likes it dirty. She's like four. That's weird. Just saying. 
In her country, it's okay. How old is uh, <laughs> That's all I was saying. How old and she travels to enough countries that I'm sure that she'll land in one that yeah. it won't be a problem. Yeah. Someplace Asian, you know. I feel like we've all learned a lot so far tonight. Uh, yeah. you know. I think more about us than about <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Like says, there you go. Team Parash, everybody. The one fun gun on Twitter. You guys remember any of your, uh, do you remember any of your, like, uh, first jokes when you were starting stand-up? Yeah, there? I do remember a really horrible joke I had when I first started. It was about uh, how there were no black people on Jeopardy. And if they were, you would have like, the categories would be like, blind singers, <laughs> uh, barbecue holidays. <laughs> so he's still killing, look at that. <laughs> still on fire. How about you, T, do you remember any of your... I mean, I started in college, and I remember like the first joke that got a laugh was like, they had this scramble light at Ball State, which is like, because there were so many like blind people that were there, they tie it into your blind thing. Uh, like it would start, you know, like chirping like birds, so blind people knew they could cross in any direction. Oh, yeah. So I told some like Red Band esque like joke that we get a groaner. <laughs> we get a groaner, you know what I mean? Like, it probably had the word butthole in it. And um, everyone would groan, and I'm like, come on, it's not like I'm chirping behind blind people at the scramble light. And it got a huge laugh. Yeah. And I'm like 20 at the time. And I was like, wow, that actually worked. Yeah. And uh, then I left there, and I can't use that joke anymore, so. It's funny how you can write a re joke or you can write a good joke around like a groaner or a, or a silence. Like you can totally use that to your advantage, you know? Yeah, sandwich it with something that's not a groaner. Right. Get well, back that's, your, yeah, that's your intention. Right. <laughs> then I had this joke about fucking mermaids and it never uh, <laughs> went down so to some sense. guy named Dean. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like mermaids. They don't have legs and they don't have feet. Oh yeah, that's right. You have a uh, a foot fetish. Well, you don't have to say they don't have feet if they don't have legs. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. And that's I would just, really not trust them on the head. No legs, just but tor feet. torso and then feet underneath. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be weird. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah! Your next comedian goes by the name of Kate Quigley, everybody. <laughs> Hey guys, so uh, I'm a really shitty dater because I suck at picking guys because I want to believe every guy is the right one so I just make excuses for him, you know? Like I had a guy show up at my house recently wearing a hat for a first date, wearing a hat that says cock on it. Literally. And I'm like, cock, that's not good, but I don't know, like maybe he's not a homophobic guy. Like that's not so bad, right? <laughs> No, it means he's a dick, and he's advertising it on his forehead, you know? By the way, I dated that guy for a year. True story. I mean, I feel like it could be anything. Like, Hitler could show up wearing a shirt that says, I killed the Jews. I'd be like, I killed the Jews. That doesn't seem good. But maybe, maybe he's a stand-up comic, and he really kills it in rooms filled with Hollywood executives. I don't know. No, it's fucking Hitler. Like, I'd probably marry him. Because that's how awesome I am at picking guys, you know? We'd have little Hitler babies running around. But you have to admit, they have amazing stage presence. Because <laughs> Hitler had that. He had that. That's, that's a minute. Thank you. Yeah, 58 seconds. Right. Right. Start off, I think your internal clock was awesome, because you were like, that's a minute. And it was she just remembered day. sex with the guy with the cock on his head. <laughs> that's about right. All right, come on, people. So a guy really had a cock tattooed on his forehead? No, he had a hat. That's a like cock on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I the crazy thing is, I see I see the hat a lot. Now, did it just say like just cock or like because South Car Carolina are the game cocks? No, it wasn't a game cock. It has a rooster on it. I have that same hat. Cock. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, have that hat. Why, why, why am I not Brian? Why but am I not it doesn't say cock on it. Just has a rooster on. Well, it. no, it says cock. No, I have a different ver variation of that one. Well, I would say, since we're supposed to be given sure. mm -hmm. constructive criticism. Um, <laughs> I feel like you're going to save the show tonight, by the way. Because, you know, I mean, we don't all have to be funny, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Technically, you do, actually. Well, not really. Um, I would say that, you know, instead of, like, trying to think of things that are funny, just be truthful about how you feel about these things. So I think the joke was supposed to be about, like, you're, you're horrible at picking guys, and then so this is, like, 
oh, these are the guys that I picked. And then yeah. you were trying to make the things you were talking about funny. Like, oh, Hitler are funny. The cock thing is funny. It's, it's supposed to say more about you. Yes. You know? So you be vulnerable. You be like, talk about yourself. And then, and, and as a side note, oh, this is how I'm horrible at picking guys because this guy had a cock on his head and I still went out with him. And then you don't have to come up with some like fictitious thing that doesn't ring true. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Or even yeah. just not just yet. Like you can really personalize that and make that about you and make it about. So like when you get off the stage, people feel like they know you. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Or relate. Relate. Yeah. Yeah. Same, which is the same thing. You know. you know, they can relate to that and be like, oh, that happened to me once, or that ne that happened to my girlfriend, or that kind of shit. You know. I'm gonna say that this is really like this is a tough situation. You know, you comics are coming up here doing this. So I mean, the people that are gonna come up, you know, come up and perform like you're in minute eight of a, you know. 20 minute set so it doesn't ring so like false you know we're still having a good time you know we're up here making fun and we're having a you know great so come up here and just like you know then it, it will it will sound real it won't sound like oh that person's only doing a minute of comedy in front of these people and nobody's paying attention so they're gonna like blah 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 you know you know what i'm saying so just like chill relax you know but that's not even just for you it's just for whoever's about to come up here right now you know what i mean you can still Sometimes you only get a minute when you go to auditions and things sure. like that. So you can't just be, you can't wait five minutes to do your minute of like really showing who you are. So we'll be back after this. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like the only person up here with a network show. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have commercials, buddy. You don't have to say that here. You can, you can actually I say just, the word just, fuck. It just sounded the perfect time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Let's go to a caller in it's Texas. It's naturally in your own fucking, you know, it's in your ethos now. That's my favorite thing to do. Of course it is, yeah. We'll be yeah. right back after this. Of course, man. Do you guys right. know the best thing about Quiznos? Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> it's a left turn, but I'd like to hear it. They have Diet Mountain Dew, and right now, you can get a small Mountain Dew and a roast beef six inch for four ninety nine. Are they a sponsor of the show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well then, we did actually <laughs> went to a fucking commercial. Is that right? That's right. We did that. I love Quiznos. Yeah. We all love Quiznos. And the only thing better than Quiznos is washing it down with a delicious... G2 Gatorade, uh, <laughs> right, my friends, low calorie G2 Gatorade, a full balance meal for everyone that likes things. And if you like that, then you should drink Smart Water because uh, that's also something that. Yeah, does if you want to, and while you're doing all that, go to ericgriffin.com. <laughs> And look, no one wants a baby. Wear magnum condoms. I'm wearing one right now. <laughs> Weird commercial. But anyway, you know, so, uh, you know, that's my constructive criticism. How long have you, like, yeah. you been doing this? About two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah, so right. you're telling, you know, yeah, yeah. Just fresh and new. You know, you're just coming up with jokes, and you're, you know, that's when you're like two years, you're just trying to find words that are funny together. Yeah, yeah. But like when you make that Which personal and make it about yourself, like it's just like Eric says, it's the best advice. It's There's like, no right or wrong way, by the way. No right or wrong way. It's just my thing. But they can have different perspectives, but I just feel like, you know. All right. That was good. We'll be back after this. <laughs> there you go. There she goes. Can quickly for Magna Conda. Magna Conda. You're fucking Kate You're definitely very Magna Conda. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I hope oh, so. you. <laughs> Helping me make that money. You know, uh, Adolf Hitler was a very evil man, but he had a lot of determination. He was a poor artist, a veteran of World War One. He went to prison in 1923, wrote Mein Kampf, which means my struggle. Ten years later, he was the Chancellor of Germany. Germany. You know, this my is actually means translates to my head. This is like dropping your resume while you're raping a chick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, have I ever told you about Jeffrey Dahmer and his great ideas? But he's still doing it. You know, I know I'm you know, forcing my cock in you. Yeah. But, uh, funny story about where I went to college. <laughs> Germany was having a tough time in the 20s. He rallied the country together. It was a incredible time. Oh my God. What is wrong with you, Peter? No, no, I love the Jewish people. I love the Jewish girls, especially. Don't get me wrong. The Jewish girls, especially. Well, you, you just, know, you just fucked really that like, one up, Patriot. You know one Jewish girl I really like is Little Esther. I've been, I've been posting some screenshots oh, of Little Esther. Yeah, dude, I'll tell you what. You want to have sex with Little Esther? Here's what you do. Wake up and ask Little Esther to have sex. That's all it takes, buddy. Hey, Red Man, what's her feet Jesus. look like? Little Ouch. She's got Obviously, the teeth. teeth's fucked a little less. Well, no, 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 if you no, no. imagine her feet without all the hair, they look pretty nice, probably. 
Oh, she has hairy feet? Oh, yeah. Don't tell that to this guy. This guy's kind of about to go nuts. Like, Does she mom. have legs attached to her feet? No, I say that hair. <laughs> And that's comic, uh, so, <laughs> let's talk more about this, uh, this rant you just went on about the headline for a second. I can't pull another name out of the bucket that quick. Um, where, where is that coming from? What, uh, just be honest and real. Where, where, how do you, how do you have that take on him? He Hitler? finds the good in everyone. Well, well he, I'm uh, just saying it's amazing he came, that country was really struggling and he was really poor. And he brought them together. <laughs> now, now it went bad. It went bad after 1933 and the late 30s. Kind of could have gone worse. <laughs> went bad is a light understatement. Yeah, you're, uh, right. you're right, bro. The Holocaust? Yeah. <laughs> Are we talking about the same Adolf Hitler? Yeah. She went pretty bad, Tony. Tony's right on that Man, one. I mean, you gotta give him credit. I mean, he was poor at one point, and then he's killing Jews in chambers. Yeah. He was a nice artist, though. You ever look at his art? No. It's pretty straight. Really? Yeah. It's like, what? That's not fair. Wow. Oh, he creatively killed people. Yeah. So. That's true. He liked Charlie Chaplin, too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my book, especially his mustache. <laughs> yeah, he did. The views expressed by Iron Patriot are not the views. On the Mac, what's the show network? This guy is always on it. Quiz notes? Right. Smart Gatorade ball. does not endorse the thoughts <laughs> yeah. of. Coming in next, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yes. Here he is. It's Frank Castillo, everybody. Here he comes. Turn it up. Hi everyone. Uh, I was at work, and uh, we have to do a lot of homeless people. And they're really, really scary. So usually when they come in, we just try to ignore them and you know, let them be. We had one crazy guy come in, and he was just talking to himself, and he just started shouting and being really aggressive. He came in, he was just like, he's like, everyone should buy my package for thirty nine ninety five. It'll make you a millionaire. It was just getting outlandish. In the middle of it, he's like, I may be delusional and schizophrenic, but I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and in the middle of it, he started trying to sell candy bars to random people. And he walked up, he was like, buy a candy bar, I need to buy a beer. My boss was like, just get him out of here. So I walked up and was like, sir, you can't sell candy bars. He was like, I know I'm trying, but no one's buying. <laughs> In the middle of it, another homeless guy who usually comes to our store came in and he looked at the other crazy guy and he goes, Crazy people. And I looked at him and I was like, What? You can't judge another homeless guy. And he's like, Yep, yep, yep. Well, time to get back to my spaceship and just walked out. There you go, one minute. Well done. Well done. Fuck yeah. I assume you picked it back. Yeah, you nailed it. Uh, okay. Eric, what do you think? Um, Where do you work? That's what I was uh, going to say. Coffee shop. Oh, damn it. I should have. Yeah, man. Just, uh, you know, it's the only note I would give you, bro, yeah. is create that, like, set that world up. Yeah, we're Let trying to know, like, a picture in your head. Right? Right? Because you'll, you'll go into the bit, and the, all of your setup, everybody's thinking, where does he work? And they're trying to put themselves in that place. Right. Create the place for them to be, and then make it funny in your personal take. Other than that, man, there's funny shit, dude. Yeah. And, you know, for some reason, because exactly, I was picturing you at like a print shop for some reason, like a Kinko's, and I'm like, oh, there's a homeless guy selling candy bar at a Kinko's, you know what I mean? I don't know why, but that's just, because I didn't have an answer, I started, that's what I came up with after a few seconds. I so pictured a kind specifics is... Yeah, because you have, you know, there's, what, and 60 everybody, people here, there, you probably had 55 different places that you worked at yeah. in their heads. And you know, you can create one right out the gate, I work at this coffee shop and this is the shit I deal with. Right. You know, in, in one, two second sentence. Plus, we're all They're used all to seeing people. crazy people at coffee shops, so it's easily relatable. And the stuff that happens with them is funny, as is, so everything else is uh, pretty solid. Um, but yeah, that's like a huge note, right? Yeah, that was a lot, you guys. I don't think we all have to give notes to no, every single true. person. No, right? it's true. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, Frank, you've been on the show a few times, and i got to say, I mean, that's, uh, that's definitely one of the funniest minutes I've seen so far, so great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Frank, how fun. I used to have a joke about where, I used to work at, uh, at a coffee shop, and I used to have a joke about how, uh, about how, one of my, um, I know, you, one of my favorite jokes of yours, by the way. What's that? Like the spider. And yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? Oh, yeah, that was funny. That's so crazy. That was like four years ago. Well, it wasn't. It was like six months ago you were still no, doing that. No way. <laughs> you guys want to switch seats? 
What would that do? I'm confused. Yeah, it's good. We're right here. We'll switch the Oh, I see. We'll switch with Iron Patriot. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, yeah, it was about killing spiders. I work with all women and, and gay guys, and neither one of them likes to kill spiders. But you know who loves killing spiders? Trannies. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Trannies just fucking, they see a spider, they just fucking tuck and stomp. It's crazy. <laughs> tuck and stomp. That's anyway, like uh, do the tuck and stomp, everybody. More material that I retired. Why? That's, that's yeah, you should get that shit. Until you do it on a special, it's not retired. Yeah. There you go. Give me a special and uh, I'll do it on there. <laughs> Talk to your peeps. All right. We'll be back after this. <laughs> I actually think we have the same agent. <laughs> so I talked to him today. Anyway. No, yours is better than mine, but we are with the same agent. So. I think so. I don't know. Anyway. You guys want to switch seats? And some people can't relate to in a million years. Um, your next comedian is Mike Grubbs. How about that? Oh, shit. We're in the middle. Hello guys. All yeah. right, so uh, I got a gay little brother, and uh, when he first came out to me, I was a little bit confused because I thought he was just a straight guy that liked to wear mascara and wear green Peter Pan tights. <laughs> but it turns out he liked to suck dick too. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> but uh, anyway, so he told me to kind of put me at ease. He said, uh, you know, Mike, being gay is just like being left-handed, you know. And I was like, yeah, they're both fucking weird. But then I started to really kind of feel bad for him because I'm like, you know, not only are you going to be discriminated against, but now I got to buy you special scissors and a special can opener, you know, a notebook so that you don't smear your writing when you write with your gay hand, you know? So you hate your brother. Um, oh, you know, I, I'm you, in a gay man. No, you know what I mean? I, you really, but I've been doing it since I was three years old. Hate my brother. <laughs> You really hate vegans. <laughs> it came across for me as a left-handed person that he hates me more than he hates his brother. So, See, that's uh, kind of what I wanted to do, like more about left-handed people than gays. Sure, sure, sure. Well, so you have to do it. That's uh, the main problem when you first start doing comedy is people don't know what their jokes are about. Well, this is when I first started doing comedy. Yeah, well, I mean, what's that joke about? I don't know. I, I, just, well, no, I didn't want it. I didn't want well, to hey, come hey, out. Yeah, how, how long have you done comedy? Like, one minute. Oh, well, good for you. Okay, dude, then that was actually really good. <laughs> that was your first minute ever? First minute. Ever. Then I, then I, holy shit. Okay, yeah. then, 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 that was ballsy. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Mike Grubbs, everybody, right. with his first minute. Um, That's so. like a hold the microphone like this. No, I don't know what I was dude, doing. Dude, yeah, you gotta get the mic. Can you put that? Because it was like sometimes I couldn't hear you. It was no yeah. idea. Sometimes it was up here, it was a little too. Okay, okay. No, got, no, got, no, got it, got it. One hand. We'll start there. Okay. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. Mike Rubs. That's right. an interesting name. Mike Rubs. European. Mike Rubs. Yeah. Keep saying. I wouldn't want to be a big guy with the name Mike Grubbs. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, it's perfect. Yeah, especially. I, I cook, too. You know? Grubbs, a, grubs a lot, obviously. Hello. <laughs> That's present tense. It's present tense. I'm gr we be grubbing? Uh, grubbing. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, well, I mean, do you have any questions? Is this your first time? Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Do you really think, do you really have a gay brother? I really do. Yeah, he's gay. Yeah. <laughs> he's gay as fuck. No, he really sucks dick. Is he younger? Younger or older? Still younger. One year younger. I mean, he, we wait, 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 he hold sucks on. dick. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, like, wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Go. Continue. <laughs> no, no, no. You, so you, you're about to talk about your brother. Go on. Yeah, no, we used to live together. Um, I bring guys to the house. Okay. My what else? What else? No, no, no. My point is, I'm trying to make. Fish. Yes. No, my, my point I'm trying to make to you right now is Go. how you're talking about your brother right now is how you should do your jokes. Yes. Okay. You know, you have right. some passion now. I know how you feel about it. You have For some sure. gusto. It's all about performance. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's like uh, that's like you know you were, when you came again. People are coming up here and they're all nervous, holding the mic weird and <laughs> no energy. And then like Got now it. that Got you're it. all comfortable with yourself, you're like you know it's more. So it's not necessarily about the jokes are bad. It's just like you know. Uh, all about you being comfortable on stage, so yeah. just like, you know. Just also, I'll, say, right I'll say this, man, because like, you know, that's a hot topic in LA. And I was raised right. by lesbians, and I've been doing stand-up for like 16 years, and I have a lot of jokes about being raised by lesbians and all this kind of stuff. And when you do that kind of material, you have to create this empathy. It's very important okay. that you go, I am not against this. 
I support my brother, I love my brother, and because of the choices that he's made and who he was born to be, I have these situations in my life. Got you it. can't make it like, you know, you know what I'm saying, man? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. You have to yeah. fucking love your brother. They have to know you no, love your brother I, before I, you say shit. I, I wanted to say at the end, uh, and I forgot to, that, uh, you know, well, you got the I don't mean to gay bash, but, uh, but I've been doing it since I was three. It's like, I've always been coming. <laughs> Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Uh, uh, Soka. Okay, all right. Simi Valley, Ventura, Oxnard. All right. Fuck yeah. Uh, so yeah, and also, you know, write out your thoughts on, um, on living with your brother. What was that like? You know, I, cause yeah, that's it was crazy. actually, it was really crazy. And I, I actually only just started writing this, uh, this uh, was so like the first time I've ever written down. So. so you lived in a two bedroom with your gay brother. That's right. And my wife and my son. Wow. Did you hear the reaction when you said that? Yeah. That's where you go, buddy. Got it. Make it personal, man. Okay. Let them know you, buddy. Hey, congrats on doing stand-up for one day. There you go. Woo! Welcome to hell, buddy. Welcome to hell! Somebody just said, welcome to hell. Because he just said that. Jesus. Well, if you're getting your name picked out of a bucket to do one minute of comedy, yes. Welcome to hell. 100% dude. Don't cry. Uh, the thoughts of Eric Griffin are not those uh, supported by uh, I know you right back. Wow. Magnum Conda. Uh, um, he's mgrubs87 on Twitter. Frank Castillo was Frank C. Comedy on Twitter. I think I mentioned those. If not, One Pun Gun was Dean and Kate Q. Funny was Kate Quickly. Magnum Cons, where are you at? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Your next comedian goes Corporate by the name. Sellout of... over there. <laughs> Mark Murray, everybody. Here he is. Hey guys. So I've been dealing with dry skin lately, and it sucks. Every year around this time of the year, my skin dries out, and it's just the worst. My arms, my hands, my face. I mean, I get dandruff in my eyebrows. It's crazy. So the only way to get back to normal is if I brought a bottle of lotion with me around for like a week straight and just put on lotion all day. But then it would look weird. People are going to think I'm just carrying it around so I can masturbate all day. Which I probably also do. I mean, what? I'm a jerkaholic. My dick's so red, it looks like a jerk lantern Candles and all. If you turn off the lights, it glows in the dark. You know what I don't understand? Is women, when they give birth out of nowhere and they say they didn't know they were pregnant. How did you not know? You didn't have your period for nine months. I told you guys I masturbate a lot. If I don't bleed for nine months down there, I think something's wrong. <laughs> there you go, 58 seconds. Uh, all right. All right. Yeah, you ended with a punchline there. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the flakes, man, because I feel like there's something there. Well, personally, I feel like, you know, when you first start doing comedy, you have like a, you have like a, I just started doing comedy cadence, yeah. you know? Yeah. Where it's just like, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 you know? So yeah, it's like, like not comedy. really like, I don't know how you- Engageable. I don't know how you, that's not what I mean. I don't know how you feel about like these things you're talking about. Like, are you upset that you have flakes? Are you like excited you have flakes? Cause now you, need to, you know, I don't know. You could go anywhere. I mean, you were going, I know where you wanted to go with it. You ended up where you wanted to end up with, you know, masturbating, but you didn't have to like tip your hand so much. You know what I mean? It's just all about, this a performance thing. It's all I- It's true. I, I about, agree with you know this no big time. I, okay. so I, I just think, think that, yeah, go ahead. I think uh, your reactions that you got could have been different based on a change in cadence. Maybe not even the words of the, I don't know if they're actually, was enough to find punchlines anywhere in there. But I, I think that with a different, your cadence just seems unlikable. It seems like <laughs> pseudo confident. Yeah, because what's happening is, is you're going from high to low and low to high, and all of a sudden everything gets lost. There's no passion behind what you're saying yeah. because it's already that. coming out like this. And then uh, Some people are wordsmiths, you know? Well, you got a guy like Seinfeld, it's all about the written word. You know, but he still has a cadence of how he does things, but it's oh, definitely yeah. a written word and work the jokes are put together a certain way. And so like you 
thought I could tell you thought all this out, you know, but you're you're presenting it as opposed to like just talking to us. talking to yeah. 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 Talk to talk to this, uh, the audience like if you're talking to me and I knew you and you're explaining the joke to me. Yeah. Right. But I will say again, I gotta say this over and over again. There is no right or wrong way. You're the whole thing. You could have been doing like a character that is that guy and still been getting. But you're still getting laughs that way too. I mean, you don't have to be conversational. But not everyone's conversational. Stephen Wright wasn't conversational. Totally right. You know, you know, it's just there's no right or wrong way. But I'm saying you're not being genuine. It's not really you. Like I don't believe that you. You. I don't believe any of what you just said. Yeah. But it was funny. You put it together like a funny thing. But I don't believe it. And if you just put a little bit of like, because this is acting, you know, and these people are like your scene partner. So you have to listen to them too. They're not really, you know. Yeah, it's hard conversation. Um, yeah, I need to m sound more just like conversational. I guess I just need to work on that. Now I think, yeah, if I remember correctly, your first time was at the LA Pod Fest, right? Yeah, on your show. That was yeah. how long ago? Uh, hey, you making yeah. careers here. Yeah. yeah. So that was uh, what was that? Two like months ago? That was like a six, five weeks ago or something. Right. So how long? How many have you been doing a lot of spots? Since Not one. This is my second time doing it. Well, then right. that's, oh, yeah. the okay. that's the fucking yeah, problem. That is the hours on the clock, dude. You first clock in, clock out. And that's where cadence comes from. You really yeah. don't learn how to write from yeah. open mics. You learn how to sound <laughs> like yourself. And if you're not gonna respect it, it's like then don't do it. Yeah. Like I have right. no patience for people that just talk about it. Yeah, they go, I want to be a stand up. What's the last time you did an open mic? Well, six months ago. Go fuck yourself. Oh, my God. All, all, all of you. Are no, I'm serious. That's, that's the best thing I do this shit for a living, you know, and yeah. I, I can't stand people that have no respect for it. They just think because I wrote a joke and I got a microphone, so now I'm a comic. You're not a fucking comic. Right. Go do the shit every single day, right. and then come to me in five years when you finally start thinking you have a voice. Yeah. But don't have some respect for it. If you really want to do it, go out and do it. That's. It's true. Eric Griffin, everybody. Very That's true. That's the best <laughs> shit right there. That's true. Second moment, for sure. This shit is clock in, clock out. You know, they have dry skin. Yeah, it's it, that dandruff and the eyebrows is, it, is totally it, true. Is it something that just started recently or later in your life? Uh, maybe the last couple of years. I don't know. Uh, were you in the military? No. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> can, I, can I actually give the dumbest? Weirdest line of questioning ever. I mean, where was that going to go? I thought you were going to put out a product. Well, for dry skin. I feel like know. that was going directly into Hitler somehow. A lot of, lot of, lot of uh, uh, guys that went overseas uh, have developed like skin issues that were exactly what you're talking about. It's just really dry all the time. They wear flakes off. And, and uh, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's, it's true. I've heard, I've heard that. And are you from That's an so area weird. where the temperature changes a lot originally? Yeah, Simi Valley, and they had like weird nuclear oh, things yeah. that happened That's in the, the 50s. That's the nuclear plant right there. That's right. what I'm talking about. Yeah, huh? yeah you might want to move the <laughs> fuck out of there, dude. Hey, yeah. Sam Rocky. I just bought a house there, so that was not a good idea, I guess. <laughs> I'd say you flake out on the house, bro. Yeah. Seriously. So I mean, you're going to be happy. You're going to have Detroit on that. Yeah, man. Just you're, leave you're, your dog and bounce. He dies of cancer. <laughs> yeah, you don't want no four nipple babies. Mark, if you want to do this, you got to do more spots, man. You got to fucking make it a lifestyle. You know, I know people that were managing a McDonald's when they started. And, you know, like it's like you got to fucking make sacrifices and do whatever it takes. Weird time uh, to start, If though. you want to. If you don't yeah. want to, okay then you don't. that's cool. Also, another point but I'd like to make is... It's not going to fix it. If this is Paul's Hitler, we're turning your mic off. Yeah. If and Hitler wanted to do no, it, and no. he went out. <laughs> Hitler had a plan, and he executed it. And that gives our some respect. Yeah. Um, we might have to put him on probation talking about dicks, because at the podcast festival, when he talked about dick molds, and it really confused Mark Maron. You remember that? I do sort of remember that. Um, but I feel like dick molds went better than this, didn't is it, it? When you is said that, is that a real suit with like the computer display in front of you? You guys yeah. uh, remember anything? He is. He's a fucking. He's I a definitely machine. want to put that helmet on and just like see the POV. But <laughs> well, that's TV talk. So we'll be right back after this commercial break. Fuck yeah! And there you go. Wow. <laughs> so Mark, uh, beep, beep. Hat, rock and roll. Figure out what you want to do with yourself, Thank man, you, sir. because uh, you could be whatever you want to be when you grow up. Oh, Mark God. Murray, everybody. Thanks, guys. The second, the second time ever. Hold on. You said, you said, here I am starting careers. It turns out it was the second time ever on stage. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. Done First two, time was two on your minutes. Show. Yeah, I think he did better. I think he did better. I think he was... If this, if Compared this, to Hitler, how did he do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really liked Mark Murray. He had blonde hair and blue eyes and... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Patriot. Out of control. 
Oh, <laughs> you know Adolf what? Hitler. I know this guy. I love this guy. He's from the fucking south, if oh, anybody sure. ever has been. Put your hands together for Aaron Carter. Yeah. This guy just started. I'm excited about his like, voice. Literally. What's up, everybody? How we doing tonight? Woo! Hell yeah. It's good to be in Hollywood. I just drove all the way from the Confederate States of Orange County. <laughs> but like you said, I'm originally from Mississippi. They think we're all stupid. It ain't true. Some of the best chemists come out of our trailer parks. <laughs> now, I notice y'all boys out here in California use little different words like karma. That's got to be one of the biggest candy-ass terms I've ever heard. <laughs> and yes, yes, Carmen is a bitch. My bitch. <laughs> and there's a uh, few other things pissing me off. And then y'all like to use this phrase, fist world problems. Oh, they got fist world problems. If you ever use first world problems around me, I'll be sure to give you third world problems. <laughs> What's the time? <laughs> you literally said, what's the time at one minute? Thank you. Dude, I love it. Yeah. I really you. do, bro. I knew who you were from the moment you came yeah. out. There's a few times, like, first world problems. I thought you were saying visceral. And I'm like, do I not know that word? You know, slow down a little I'm bit sorry, when you're talking. Buddy. I know it's only a minute, dude. So I'm not, you know, I know it's a minute. You're trying to get shit in. Just slow down a little bit when you talk, bro. But I, you know, I know who you are. I get it. I like it. Funny. You got funny bits, bro. Like, I don't know how long you've been doing comedy. Just like keep plugging away. It'll actually be two years this March, and I lied to him and Brody Stevens because I was very intimidated. Everyone lies to Brody Stevens. Yeah, oh. well, I did too. Inbred jokes, and they were kind of. I mean, they were my jokes, but I mean, Southerners already done that before me. And I was just so scared of criticism at the time I lied to him yeah, and told him. But I told the truth later because I don't like lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to erase you right, man. Like, so, so, you are so well, fucking funny. Yeah, you know, I say, like, uh, I, I enjoy your personality. Sure. Yeah. So, like, you know, just how you just said that to us. You know, mm -hmm. you just deliver your jokes like that. But I also think that it's, like, you should be dressed like that guy right here. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> you're dressed like an accountant, and then you're. Well, I, go, I like that. I mean, I just think it's like a weird, you know. Yeah, that's how like men in my family dress. A lot of them are attorneys and stuff. You know, they're like southern politicians, and it's just kept laying stuff. How would there. you normally dress? You're going to like, if you had a date, would you dress like that? Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry to ever dress, but no, man, be you, be I'd rather not look day. homeless. No, I hear what Eric's saying, but if you're, but if that's how you would dress for a big thing. Just be you, bro. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be a stereotypical, like, I'm from the South and I'm See, a I don't wear NASCAR shirts. I don't watch NASCAR. I don't dip. I mean, I'm an okay hunter. I'm a hell of a fisherman. Talk about that shit. <laughs> Everything you're saying right now is you should you say to them out the gate. Yeah, you say that out the gate because people do what Eric does, which is like, why isn't this guy in camouflage yeah. with a hat that says Cox on it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And if you come out the gate and you go, I'm from the South, but I don't dip, I don't beat my bitch, I don't blah, 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 blah. Dude, and now we're all right. on page. Yeah. I never thought of that. Thank you. No, thank you, bro. You made me <laughs> literally. You made me laugh. Thank you, bro. That's sort of the whole point of this thing. Yeah, that's what, they, you know, that's... You got any Hitler jokes? <laughs> Uh, Not this week. I do kind of wish you did dress like in NASCAR shirts and jeans because it really looks uncomfortable to me. I, I just the whole tucking in the shirt thing kind of I don't know. But if that's but dude, that's what they do. Yeah, or you talk. Can. Well, well, see, I was talkers. raised by a single mother. She was raised by an old school Southern belle. Talk I mean, about like, that. She don't put go. elbows on the table. I could right. never use then my you hands and all that. Shit. You got to iron your damn clothes. You know right. you. But right. Your mom's not you know you go to church every damn Sunday. I mean, it's like that. You know you got to. Look smooth. I mean, it just stuck with me. All right. And I never thought about <laughs> everything that. you're saying are all setups or punchlines. Tony so right and shows red on that shit. You know? okay, right everything you're responding to. So even if you sure. don't change the way that you're dressing, you know, in some way, I mean, not obviously when you have a minute, Bobbity Bob, but you definitely are going to need to acknowledge that that this is how you were. Yeah, you, man. You always dress like you're going to church. Or you do a 15 like. minute set, they're going to spend the first four minutes wondering why you're not dressed like the way you talk. Right. right. You can spend 60 seconds. Talking about that out the gate, and then they're yours. How long have you been doing stand up in LA? 11 years. 
No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I got my start most in March, but after three months, I went broke and tan, and then I went back to Mississippi, and I did shows for, like, the troops. We had a, nas a National Guard base, did shows in Mobile, Alabama. Went down to Pensacola, Florida, some open mics, a small town, Louisiana. Okay, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy in L.A.? <laughs> oh, well, I'm trying to tally it up. Um, about four Told months. me everywhere else. Uh, Five months, not counting the year in Mississippi. You're but. unbelievable, Eric. I totally believe in you. Last week, in fact, after the show, I believe you were on last week, right? No, it was like uh, three weeks okay, ago. Okay, yeah, and after that show, I, uh, I saw a tweet immediately after the show that said, this Eric Carter needs to be a weekly regular. And I looked at the uh, the Twitter handle, and it was yours. Uh, and that Twitter handle is at CallMeEC. He's Eric Carter, everybody. Look the fuck out. This guy's, this guy's the future. He's like Larry the Netflix guy. What is Collins in Hollywood? Yeah. Wait, but wait, Larry the Netflix guy. Yeah. I gotta go upstairs on that. Thank That's you, a funny bit. Well, I would say uh, one thing about that dude is that he's got a, uh, you know, you genuinely like him, right? You know, yeah. Right? Like, it doesn't matter what he was saying. So I think that that's like, like you know, that's a lot of it. That's part of it. You know, some people are hated. Some people come off as a dick. But that's part of their thing. That's their charm. So yeah. like I said, there's no right or wrong way. He was just likable. So I just hope that he's self-aware of what's going on around him. That he'll be okay. Like Tony knows he's an asshole. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? right. No. So he comes <laughs> off like that. But he's right. You're totally right. No, I'm not trying to be. I mean, for real. Like, some yeah. people have a thing and they do. It. Right. And even more recently than ever before, am I finally even writing my stand-up out of that voice? Yeah. So. And, it, and it's clicking because the other jokes are hinting at me being an asshole. So now when I'm doing, oh, I'm confirming your thoughts. I'm 100%, dude, because a lot of times, man, what people need to know is, like, people look, like, look for their voice. You're, you're early in your stand-up and you're looking for your voice. Your voice isn't, how are my punchlines funny? Your voice really is, how am I perceived? Yes. And once you realize how people perceive you, you write your jokes in that way, and that's how you become, that, that's, sort of like, I, that's my voice. Probably the hardest thing ever. Sure is, really? 100% is. Yeah, yeah. So I think the proper word for Tony is cunt. Okay, Patriot. <laughs> Patriot. And the first time I'm gonna go ahead and agree with the Patriot. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Son of a bitch. Hey, look, the guy can fly, the guy can fly. Yeah. You know, a good documentary on Hitler to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Stuff. That's called Triumph time of the here, Will. Yeah. It's called Triumph of the Will by Lenny Riefenstahl. Came out in 33 in the Nuremberg Rally. Oh, it came out in 33. Okay. That was good. Is there any, is there any modern ones where... Yeah. A lot of good documentaries from 33. <laughs> yeah, you can watch that on Netflix. I bet. All right. But Lenny, Lenny did regret that. Lenny Riefenstahl regretted that she did that later on when everything went bad. She regretted it. Patriot, this is fucking bad. This is bad. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you get a call from Parks and Rec uh, this week and they're like, it ain't happening. <laughs> hey, put your hands together for Sean Conn. All this anti-Semitic talk you bring up more some guy. Thank you for setting the tone. Uh, I'm just <laughs> at the store today, got a Gatorade to do. Come back home, see this guy walking his dog. I'll take some shit in the grass right in front of me, and the guy just walks away. So I go up to this guy, I'm like, yo man, have a little bit of pride in your community, why don't you pick up your dog's shit? The guy takes his cell phone out of his pocket, hooks up on his face, and goes, fuck you man, now I got your picture, what are you going to do about it? I was like, oh, calm down, it's not like that. Please understand, if I punch you, I'm going to take your phone. <laughs> what kind of fantasy land does this guy live in where he thinks I'm going to get aggravated assault but I won't get a petty pet to cover up my crime? Get away scot free. I'm not saying two wrongs make a right, but it will lead to a mistrial, and that's good enough for me. <laughs> so we get up with this guy, just exchange some words, and as I walked away, I threw my empty gateway bottle into the street because I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> All right, there you go. 55 seconds of Sean Cox. I, I say one thing. I, I, I had to do that. <laughs> your voice. I don't know if, if you're very quiet. No, or, I like very loud. Yeah, because it was like I tried to turn it up, but it was like, whoa, that's way too loud. It, it, I mean, I could understand what you were saying if I really paid attention, but it was just kind of like I went down to the top and I was like, whoa, I could almost not hear, understand. No, I just I hate selling the bits because I'm such a. 
fantastic water. I don't need it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, I'm, know, just very, I'm very kind of monitoring that, that. That's funny that you say that because I felt that you were a little arrogant when you came on stage. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> no, no, wait. Are you being serious? Oh, yeah. No, no, I, you know, I'm not. So am I. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That so, and, that, and that's okay, but, you know, the problem in, in Hollywood is still a, an image business. It's still, a, you know, where you have to perform and project, you know. problem in this business right now, especially in Hollywood, is that, you know, the pretty comics don't think they need to be funny, and the ugly comics don't think they need to be pretty. And it's like, <laughs> there's like a oh, middle that's ground. A t-shirt. That's a t-shirt. There's a that middle ground. ground. There's amazing. a middle ground that has to be has to be done. You know. Are so you, you can't be up just, your company. Dude, wow, no, no, no. What awesome. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is like, it's still your job to like project and like do all the performance things that are important in a, in a in a thing. And then all this swagger that you have, it will come across even better, and people will laugh at that. Yeah. Or they're gonna hate you because of it, and they're still gonna be. That's what you want. Yeah. Like you know, like I, what I like about you is that you necessarily don't give a fuck if these people laugh at you or not yeah. okay but what I'm saying is then you still have to have a little bit of like you know a conversation with them you have a you're still performing yep. you know what I'm saying you're still performing so it's like even when you came on with the, the one thing I liked immediately is you came on and you addressed the Hitler lover right away because right. that's what's going on in the room right now yeah. and then you went into your thing but you know it's like project they still have to hear you they have to hear those great jokes it's true. You know, they're not gonna be over here like, oh, these jokes are so great. Yeah, I wish 100% I could hear them. agree. 100% you know? so, agree. Like, like you, you came across like with that opening bit where you kind of like talked about what was relevant in the room and took that control. And then I was like, okay, this is the most confident comic we've had. And then after like the next 10, 15 seconds, I'm like, oh, he doesn't understand his confidence. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to say you misused it. I just say like. You didn't understand it. And you also don't want to get lost into a world of where, like, you think you deserve shit. Because it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I'll just fuck around. No, no, but I'm just saying, like, this is for everybody. Like, yeah. this, like, for instance, this building is just a building. Okay? And it's yeah. run by a person. And if you want to get into this building, that person has to think you're funny. It doesn't mean that you're funny or not. Just that person has to think you're funny. And if, this, if you want to do all the things to make that person think you're funny, then you do it. If not, you move on to the next thing. Because you know I mean? there's a lot of rooms in this world. You know? uh, Let's get into the comedy store. Well, when you don't have any jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. That doesn't yeah. help, man. That doesn't help. Uh, Jokes would help getting in this Oh, dude, you can't fucking do that shit. But yeah, anyway. man, and, and, like, we're not knocking your confidence because no, that's such all. an important thing to, yeah, to have. So. But don't misuse confidence when you're a comic because to the audience, it comes across as arrogance and you have to create that, like Eric said before. You're in, this is your, you'll get that later. Oh, I got a guy, that's Josh Martin, I'll come it's over true. here. It's true, the twist it's on the, well, the twist on the arrogant thing is, is, since you already come across that way, if you project just a little bit, like 10, 15%, it's almost like they're like, this guy's arrogant, but he's doing this for us. Does that make sense? So it's like, he's, we can tell he probably doesn't even want to be that much louder, but he's doing, I don't know, if, you know what I'm saying? Like when you, when you're that confident, just a little bit more volume, because it definitely, that was going to be my note, absolutely, was just a little bit of volume control, which is, it's really just the mic anyway. You could still talk however you want yeah. to talk, but you have to yeah. control the, wherever you want to hold the mic. Um, but, uh, but if you give just a little bit, you get a lot more. In fact, I got heckled uh, during some, something was going terribly wrong with some kind of speech. It was like a Christmas speech or something. Oh, God. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't even stand-up, but I was saying something, and it wasn't even going well, and then I remember somebody going, project! And I remember, <laughs> I remember it just being this person who I didn't think was that funny, but uh, had, had a theater background, and you know they just yeah. know the performance side of everything, and I just know how to sort of think of funny ass shit right off the top of my head all the time. You know, it's like sometimes, sometimes like I'll, I'll give this advice and it, and it, it really can go a long way. It's like, don't, confidence is cool. It's really great. It's an asset. But just be like, I'm not better than the audience. I'm an audience member that has a microphone in my hand. You know what I mean? And you're having a conversation with 65 people. They just don't have a mic in their hand. What do you think? I think if it was longer than a minute, I'd get into it, but it's just a minute, so I don't like to have warmed up. You do have a very quiet voice. <laughs> that's your thing. That's, no, it's, that's, I just, I, I mean, like, I'll, like, I'll get worked up, like, like, I'll be in the back, and I, just, I talk like it's very, like, monotone, very kind of spot. I'll get in, I'll get into it, though. 
Why don't you put your hands? Just like hold the mic like this. Just, just look at the video. I'm so... I know, no, you got like, it. I mean, I'll get, like, I'll get worked up. Like, if it's, if it's something that, like... Because that's just pretty much just a score. So, I mean, it's, I mean, there's no points in it to where, like, I need to, like, project. There's always a point. I mean... Well, I that's mean, insulting but, to Tony and his no, show no, and no, his no. format. <laughs> and all the people that won't get picked out of this bucket that came here today to do this. No, I'm saying specifically Wait, that what? material, though. Yeah, I'm what saying, I'm saying is, like, he said, what's well, no, no, a minute? Not, so oh, it's right, like, I didn't right. really get to get into it. It's what they signed up for. Yeah, it always yeah. bothers you me. Signed, I'm just saying, like, you signed up to do a but minute. That's yeah. relative to this bit. In this minute, you know, there's nothing in, like, that I feel that I really need to put the energy in. I mean, there's no Whenever you're like, I'm going to wait until I get a 20 minute spot on HBO, what happens is you never get a 20 minute spot on HBO. There's nothing that I have that needs the energy, and I'll put the energy out, but. I feel like you feel like you're being attacked. You don't have to be no, defensive. No, 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 no. Right. no I'm just you're trying to defensive. explain what my... You're you're being defensive. Defensive. I mean, there are tens of thousands of listeners and 80 yeah. people in this room right now, but you're whenever, you, whenever you're ready to project, I guess... Uh, <laughs> Iron Patriot, throw him a Hitler metaphor. The talent coordinator of the comedy store listening from the end of that green hallway, but why would you project? You're right, Sean. Um, no, that's fun. We'll see you next time. You're always funny. Very great material, as always. Sean Pon. Big guy, he's got, a, he's got a, it's, it's a deep voice, but it's like a little tiny deep voice. Yeah, it's very like a, it's like an Armenian shack. That's the perfect example. For my next bit, I don't know, we might oh, yeah. end the show on that. Well, we are moving into our final. Sure, special feeling we want. We're moving into our final part of the show where, uh, uh, all, as always, and uh, as Is this a lightning week, round? Nope. It's three what? lovely females who do a new minute every single week. Nice. And uh, oh. tonight will be no different. No more buckets? Nope. We're done with the bucket. Oh. Fuck it with the bucket, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. How about one more hand for Eric Carter, who brought the bucket? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. Oh, it's Murray, Mike Grubbs, Frank Castillo. One more time for America, everybody. <laughs> and <Dave laughs> Okay, so let's start out with uh, the newest of the uh, ladies. Um, she is uh, she's known from her performance at the LA Podfest where she made her Kill Tony debut. She's been pretty much on every show since then. Put your hands together for the very funny Sarah Wineshank, everybody. Yeah. Uh, Right? Like, starting with the Renaissance painters. All those people, they paint a bunch of pictures of Jesus and Mary. All of them look exactly the fucking same. And people go look at them and they're like, wow, Madonna and child. But it's just like the one right before it, right? It's the worst. <laughs> Aside from that, <laughs> moving along to the other, another type of artist that I don't like is street artists. Street artists, they think they're so fucking cool because they have to go incognito around, you know. They have to conceal their identity. Okay, I watched an interview with a street artist and he said, if it wasn't illegal, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> hey, douchebag, right? Street artists, they paint something with a stencil and they think they're sending out a, like, a profound message into the world. They think that they're renegades. You spray a question mark, someone goes, to me, this question might mean to question everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sarah went to the bear on that I one. <laughs> she pushed it to the angry bear. Yeah, was that what happens? Yeah, you go the, past a minute, you yeah. get like a louder animal. You get the bear, <laughs> then you get the badger, <laughs> then you get the wolverine to the face. By the way, normally it happens in the beginning with everybody. And there's another thing that happens that if a comedian ever signs up and they don't get on, uh -huh. uh, or I mean, if they sign up and they... Flock of ease. And they're not here when they get picked out of the bucket, they get blacklisted and the Patriot has to oh. go like this. <laughs> That's it. Thank God that didn't happen. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, yeah. So we're giving her yeah. stuff to. Yeah. Oh. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> um, a lot of art. I like the beginning. You have a very interesting uh, type of voice and delivery that's different. Like there was a part that I made me and Brian laugh really hard. Where you're just like, ugh, it's at the end of it. You're gonna, you know, 
Like, I don't know, I can't remember okay. the exact moment, but there's almost something so different in that that... I mean, you could also have things that you're saying with it and during it, but it's so real. It feels like you're actually yeah. talking about something that is... Um, yeah, do you really not like street art? Uh, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. My point is, mm -hmm. just how you just said that Say it on was more, like, I feel was more, like, passionate mm -hmm. than everything that you said. Okay. Because that was like real. That's why I asked you a question. So how do you feel about it? You're really that's just it's just a performance thing. Right. So like I don't I wasn't sure if you were gonna be like an alty type comic or if you were but it's like you're gonna find your voice, I can tell, you know. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I didn't know if you were like really I was like, Does she really hate street art? And anytime right. people anytime people ask that question in their head, then you know that you're not necessarily conveying how you really feel about something right. properly. You know okay. what I mean? So that's like, if you really don't like it, then you know, it's okay to stand there and go like, you know, you know just how right. you talk about it. You don't even have to be so matter of fact. You don't even have to say, I hate street art. It could just be like, you know, this fucking pretentious, you know, yeah. whatever. Okay. That's your, how you feel about it right like there. how I would talk to them. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Where did you that's meet what I was going to say. Where did you meet the street artist that you talked to? Was well, he... I didn't meet him. I didn't talk to him. I watched an interview with him. I should have said it. Which is like, and I was just watching it and I was like, I hate him like so much. <laughs> It's so a lot, and again, that's a, and again, oh, I'm sorry, because I was going to say that, like, can I, can I, can I, can I, here we go. Does it have to do with that part? Because I have something, too. Since I have jokes, let me go. Um, <laughs> Wait, was it? No, no, no. Eric, was to, uh, that's the part this part works. <laughs> you can't just make fun of the people that, <laughs> no, because he, all right, it was a callback from the, okay. all right, no, it's all good. You go ahead. No, no, no. No, it's golden by the host. Keith, what is, what is, what is, uh, let's do more podcast, everybody. No, I would. I, I'm out of here. What? what no, yeah, yeah. Okay, call back me. Uh, no, I agree with you. Like, you seem like the kind of like you're, you're you're adorable, and everything about you from the moment you come up is likable. So the fact that you have so much contention is very attractive to an audience member. If I had coffee with you, you seem like the kind of person in an hour of having coffee where I would say maybe eleven words, which is not bad. Yeah. But when you only have a minute set, like you tried to set up three different things and you couldn't beat out any of them. Right. So just like pick your fight. Talk. You know what talk I mean? Less like about one thing. I imagine okay. talking is not your weak point in your life. And I mean that complimentary, not okay. I think there's you know? something in the fact that you didn't meet a street artist, that you did see the interview because you want to be able to tell street artists how much you don't like what they're doing and you don't get a chance to. Like, people don't even know who Banksy is. Like, it could really open up doors for, you know, right. maybe you're just, maybe your new thing is, you know, writing a critique next to the street art or over the street art or, I don't know, just any any approach on how can you And see, and that's what I was going to say is that, you know, there's, like I said, there's no right or wrong way and then, like, this is, like, just a route and then the branch can go anywhere you want it to sure. go. So that's just where he's going with that. Mm -hmm. And I say that the thing is, like, people don't, you don't know what your joke is about. That's some, I think right. that's a common mistake that everyone has. We don't know where we're going to go yet. So it's like, okay. is that joke about, like, watching things on TV and people are pretentious dicks and you want to talk about that because right. it could be about artists it could be about politicians it could be about a whole a host of things because that's just how you you know or it could be like, right. you know, strictly about art that like you don't like any artist because yeah. of whatever reason and that yeah. can go a whole different uh, direction too so it's just like you know pick a direction and then it's like make to... your umbrella smaller because you tried to go art I know. and you should just go like street yeah. art or right. old school art or impressionism so or whatever so... you, you just like in a minute I'm a wordy chick, and I can talk about anything for four hours, and in one minute, I'm going to talk about art. There's so much that you can do. It's so specific yeah. for someone like you, love. Like, you brought up the stencils and the, the idea of how, how ridiculous that is. Like, you're an artist, but yet you can make a million uh, of the same piece. 100%. The same There's so much more layers of just that one topic. Yeah. Right. right. And how just did stenciling, did these... you could have done a minute. You could probably do probably an hour just judging off of that. But. Right. Can I say something real quick about Sarah? Absolutely not. <laughs> hey, let me, yes. it has to do with yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. answer your question. Yeah. Yes, she's Jewish. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, it was a great development this week because I saw Sarah on the Ice House Chronicles and it's cool to see that if you impress Red Man and Tony, 
they'll take you over with Death Squad to the Ice House. And I'm looking forward to Sarah being over there. I'm looking forward to Kimberly going on that show to Ice House. There you go. It was great. The Iron Patriot. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> there you Ice go. House Chronicles. Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Sure, so you're on Twitter. Princess Weinshank. Is that like Shawshank Redemption? Yeah, I know. Your next comedian, everybody, always entertaining, always <laughs> educational. Put your hands together for Sarah Mostajabi, everybody. Sarah Preston! Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Uh, actually, you just made a joke about the, 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 I had to run out of here and go suck on something. You just made this blowjob joke about that's how you get into the comedy store. Uh, actually, it was a cigarette, because I'm fucking dying of anxiety. Sick of fucking hearing that. Uh, I'm sorry, that wasn't, that wasn't funny at all. Let it go. Uh, I, uh, I've only been doing comedy for four months, and I'm on the, I'm in, and I like do the potluck and shit, and it's crazy that if you think that I, I give a blowjob for that, because it must have been, I, what did I, like, I got on a, a, a basically a, a leveled up open mic, did I, what kind of blowjob did I give? Did I use, like, teeth? Like, <laughs> did I not make eye contact? Like, was it just completely dry? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, that was the moment I was in. There you go, guys. Sorry. Okay. Well, wait. I'm very confused to what that was. Well, I'm, I'm not. Wait, 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 wait. You were talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm not confused at all. Yeah. Okay. One, I'm, I'm glad that you recorded yourself. You put it down to record yourself like you're trying to be professional, like that. Okay. Two, you came up here and you wanted to do something just win the moment off the cuff of stuff. I appreciate that. Yeah. Three. Uh, you know, it's okay to acknowledge when something doesn't go well. That's always gets a laugh. Yeah. It's always that's a real moment you were having right there. But then the, here's the thing I would critique: Why the fuck are you looking over here at us? You know, like because like don't that, just look at us. That, when you said like that, like you were talking about how to get in the comedy store, and Brian was. No, like, no, I understand, but blah, blah. what about them? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm... They outnumber us by a little bit. No, no, I know, I, I know why you were talking about that, but I'm just saying is once you get over like your nervousness, I think your instincts are correct. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm your just instincts... trying to be in the. In the You're not even pocket. listening. You don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. That's, that's your big. That's your big problem. Is you don't listen. You were you waiting to talk, and I'm just saying like just chill. I'm a little upset. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why you're upset. I'm giving you. I thought that. Yeah, like, why are you upset? Yeah, I think that you're. Uh, because uh, when you were talking about how to get into the comedy store and you were and like, I said blowjob, that upset you. Uh, well, you were doing a little thing and you were like, yeah, blowjob. Right, right. So why did that upset you? Yeah, I'm saying if I wanted Satire. to get a spot here, I would have to give Tommy a blowjob. Is what I was saying. Are you saying that <laughs> that you had to give a blowjob and now you're just upset if you hear the word blowjob so in the comedy store? It was like the hardest thing. No. I'm wow, not. You, just, you just called yourself out. Because you were looking out. at me because you were attacked. Look, we're not fit five years old. I just thought that, uh, I, I thought it was a fucking jab at me. Jab at you. So you think everything's about oh, you while no, we're talking about you. I'm not in the room. room. I'm completely confused. No, I just, I, I you know. I really I, thought, uh, that's I thought funny because. Here, I thought you were coming up here and you were like playing off this thing, but you're actually coming up here no, with, with world coming? shit. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of those things you're, where you're, you're like, listening. everything that's going on is about me. If you were listening, if you, I don't know if you listened to the podcast, but there was a while ago where I was kind of working on something similar. Again. And I was talking, it's just something that I'm going through in my life. And I'm trying to make it funny so that I can deal with it and get over it. Because it's something that I hear that people say about me. And, like, I've been doing that for four months and I'm doing, like, this fucking, you know, I, I don't know. Who so, says this about you that you think people are talking about this? There's, I've never heard anybody say that you give blowjobs. That's how, why you're here. Well, can, I, can, I, can I say something real right now for yeah. a second? I'm sorry. I'm just hurt. I'm, like, confused. I'm, Pay attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is an issue. <laughs> that a lot of like this is like a female comic thing right now yeah. where you feel like this is like the world's against you and it probably is against you it's hard listen most male comics aren't funny you know what I mean so the, the, the issue you're dealing with right now about this like how people are making you feel you're gonna have to get over that because it is a boys club they, they say crass things a lot of bullshit is said people are always getting on everybody it's, it's a hard thing to do especially if you're trying to get into this particular club it's this is a really hard club to get into, and if like right now the week will not survive. So you acting like this is not going to get you in, and then the people that want to get in, they're like this. Good, get rid of that bitch. We're done with that shit. That's a good Next tell person. with a limp. Next person. Sorry. 
So I'm just saying, it's like, just chill. Like, you know, like, 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 like I, I'm completely confused right now, but I'm on board now. You, you have like a personal issue that's going on, yeah. and I don't think this is the forum to like bring that up. You know? Yeah. No, you're right. But I mean? it's like, like it's kind of stuff I was trying to write. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go ahead. But it's kind of like I kind of was trying to work on. I had heard. Uh, uh, the premise that I thought was really funny, uh, and I was trying to work on it like two weeks ago, is just, uh, you know, what's so wrong about being a slut? Like, what's a big deal? And why is sex such a big deal? And, like, that's just kind of something I was trying to I didn't hear on. any of that tonight. You weren't, no, you weren't here, I know. Right. But no, I'm I, saying, but you would have done that tonight, and we all would have maybe been on board with it. I didn't hear any of that tonight. I got, you I think looked I at probably, Red Band and you yelled at him. I think I probably <laughs> reacted, but, I mean, I know, I know. I have no, this, can I tell you something? I have no problem with reaction. I have no problem with you having some raw emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you know, you yeah. you don't even agree with it. That's yeah. why you're like kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. You could have just been like, hey, fuck this guy for saying we would have been, we would have laughed our ass. Absolutely asses. right. You know? There she goes. You know, at Sarah dresses on Twitter. She's <laughs> Sarah Mostajabi, everybody. <laughs> yes. I love Sarah to death. Part of the charm of Sarah is she has a meltdown every three or four weeks. <laughs> All women do, bro. It's okay, though, because she always rebounds and comes back. All right. Well, well, 25 weeks without a meltdown. Here's her counterpart, Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Oh, that's... Guys, that was hard to watch. You know, you know what else is hard? Mondays are hard, you know, because we all go to work. I went to work this morning. And when I work, I mean like hard work, you know? I fucking get up, walk over to the scanner, scan shit in, print, staple, staple, look cute, hard work, no big girl shit. And I'm online and I come across this story of this girl who started her own business, right? She started a cuddling business. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I have two fucking. I have two little blood spots on my finger from a stapler, and this bitch is canoodling her way to retirement. <laughs> I took five naps yesterday. You know what I got? A stiff neck. Ooh, killing it. <laughs> Hilarious. Real, one small little note, because again, like you're, you know, you're you're likable, you're presentable. Like I like the way you came out and you like acknowledge like the. You know, uncomfortable right aspect of the room, canoodling versus spooning. She's spooning her way to start up. Yeah. Spooning, you know, canoodling. I'm like, what is like, what yeah. is canoodling? Yeah, yeah. Spooning. Everyone knows what that is. Okay. Yeah. You know, just that's. A, I know it's a small little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit it on the, the nose. Wording. It's a pop instead of a. It's just a quick. Maybe little. call it back. Also, like I took five naps today. She and got a stiff neck. She took five naps today. And, and got yeah, a new she brought out. She, she bought an yeah. Lexus. Yeah, exactly. I said right. it wrong. I, I started with saying she made six hundred dollars. Probably worked three hours. I made minimum wage, took three naps, and got a sick nap or something. Yeah. Make it a little bit less math. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like too much math. Algebra. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, so, what is the to you? What is all that about? That whole. Well, the, I was trying to make the whole thing like I'm like I'm like being a brat and saying my job's so hard, but it's really not, and I'm jealous of this girl that's like napping with weird girls old men. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go into like I was gonna go into like what she can write in her tax write-offs, like and stuff like that or like what kind of men actually call just to snuggle with someone okay what i'm what i'm trying to point out is that that's a completely different joke yeah, yeah. and yeah. when you even s answered his question you gotta laugh yeah like when you answered what what eric was saying you've got to laugh out yeah. of that. oh yeah. my point is is this like you know we like i said i keep saying we don't know what our jokes are about like what is this really about is it about the fact that this girl's like dude, dude, has a bullshit job and you're jealous of her? Yeah, that's what okay. Well, then yeah. your whole how you express that is going to be, oh, I'm jealous, and then you would express it that way, yeah. and then we would get that because you started, you know, listing off all these things, and you were trying to be like, I don't and know what that whole beginning part was about. Just like if you're yeah. saying, I'm, you could have just been like, I'm really jealous of it. I have a real job, and I'm jealous of this chick. This yeah. is her job. And that's what it's about. It doesn't have to be that. I'm just saying, what is it to you? Right. Which it yeah. seems to be that you're jealous about it. Like, have you? Uh, are you well, was, snuggling with anybody? No, well, I was. I was thinking okay. about it like. Let's take a different approach. <laughs> Do you want to be? Let's hear an excuse rather than no, a new. She would make forty dollars. <laughs> there you go. How's that? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying about like my job's easy, and I'm still jealous of this girl. Right. Like I just want it to be easier all the time. 
and you're cuddling for free yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Right. So what I'm saying though is that like that's a layered joke because one you're trying to you're trying to make fun of yourself to say that I'm complaining about how hard my job is and you want us to laugh yeah. because it's not really that hard. Right. Okay, that's a performance thing. Yeah. Like it's that's how you sell that. Okay. You didn't sell that at all. We didn't get that message. Okay. And then the next joke is about how this girl, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, layered. Yeah, yeah. You have to know the... And we have company. run out of time. We oh, did it. That's boom. episode yeah. 25 of Kill Tony. I'm doing punch from our Jason. What do you got going on? He's at the team on Twitter. Uh, at the team on Twitter. Always on Punch Run with me, Sam Tripoli, Ari Shafir, every Tuesday at noon at punchrunsports.com. Tony will be on tomorrow. Yeah. And then this Thursday, if anybody's around, my 3 for 30 show at the Ice House. Me, Sarah Tiano, Whitney Cummings, wow. each of us doing 30 minutes. Wow. Brian, uh, uh, Ryan Mervis hosting. Gotcha. And we'll see you how sober he is. Eric Griffin on Twitter, E R I K. Thank you, E R I K. At Eric Griffin, and season four with the Hollis coming out. Yeah, baby. Montez, motherfucker. Brian Redband. December 12th, I believe, when we're going to announce San Jose uh, Improv Rack and Death Squad Super Show, Christmas Show. Just go to DeathSquad.tv. Youngstown, Ohio. I'm coming home December 21st and 22nd. In a stunning turn of events, I'm performing at the Funny Farm. <laughs> anyway, so uh, tickets for that available all through links at TonyHinchcliffe.com or KillTony.com, which I bought recently, which links to TonyHinchcliffe.com. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs>